My name is Heidi Nuttall. I live in a tiny town in the Bitterroot Valley of Montana called Pinesdale, population 900. My son um, was charged in 2010 with four counts of sexual offense and um, in 2011 he was sentenced as an adult to 40 years in the justice system with 36 suspended. In a nutshell, it's been a journey through hell. Um, from the very beginning, um, when he was first, he was actually put into the juvenile detention center in the beginning. Um, he was shackled and handcuffed, which was one of the very hardest days of my life. Um, and from that day forward, he was a very emotional child. He's been neurologically tested as two years younger than his actual age. So if you imagine an 11 or 12 year old child going through that process of being put in a uh, juvenile facility with much older kids um, who have been in the system for a long time, he was physically abused, he was sexually abused. Um, I was able to help him through a lot of that process, but he was very, very emotional every day. I'd see him, he'd cry through this in the entire visit. Um, he looked forward to every single time we could come in to see him. Um, so that shackling process, the process of the emotion, and then um, he, he was released from juvenile detention into a house arrest situation. Um, working through that every single day, making sure we did everything appropriate and exactly right, and um, keeping him in a safe place. I felt it, it was much more important for me to keep him in a safe place than anyone else, you know, out in society, honestly. Um, we went through that process for 11 months with people telling us that if we did the appropriate things, that the judge would go lightly, that the prosecuting attorney would see our efforts. Um, in the end, the day he was sentenced, obviously when the judge said, you know, we give this kid 40 years in, in the justice system with 36 suspended, knowing that, you know, even when he got out on probation and parole, um, because of his traumatic birth, he had a very traumatic birth and he was neurologically tested with ADHD, anxiety disorder, short-term memory loss. Um, we knew that it was just a matter of time once he got out that he would violate and be put back into the, be put back into jail or prison or wherever and that is exactly what happened when he was released in 2015. Um, his parole was revoked within a year, not for the offenses that initially caused him to be put into the adult system, but he was um, resentenced, put into a detention center in Hamilton, the small town near us, and he's in prison now. So that's been our journey from the beginning. He was put in a youth facility in the beginning where he received sexual offender therapy, but not skills for life. Then he was put into a youth group home where he also was not prepared for life. From there, he was put into an adult home that housed men who had no place to live after they came out of prison. So he was housed with men who had been in that incarcerated state who had issues themselves. And so, um, it caused him to be extremely anxious. He had no one to help him navigate the streets. The only vehicle he had was a bicycle. Um, his anxiety disorder caused him to hour by hour, minute by minute even, have to call me on the phone and say, Mom, what do I do now? I'm lost, I can't find my way. Um, I, I don't feel safe, what do I do now? And, and so I would talk him through making lists and um, so where are you on the street? Here's where you need to go next. And so in the end, he revoked parole 
in that situation because he didn't make it to a therapy session because he was lost. And so he was incarcerated again. Then he was um, transported to Hamilton, which was where he stayed until that process was over and then was released to us. But his whole life has been full of these processes where he just, he gets anxious, the short-term memory loss kicks in, he forgets medication, he forgets to go to appointments, and, and the cycle starts all over again. So, with the way things stand now, there's no hope. There's very, very little hope for him. And so this process of being with Campaign for Youth Justice isn't just about him. It's about other youth, other children who may be caught in this same process. Because we, every child diver deserves that individual plan for them. It's not about just straight across the board in the justice system. Every kid needs to have an individual education plan for the justice system. I think he's learning to be a stronger person. And I think in the end, if he's given the opportunities to advocate for others, he will. He's not a violent person. He's not a, um, he's not combative. He's actually a very gentle person. And he has learned the processes of empathy, which is something he just wasn't one of his strong points before he went in. So there have been some of the processes of therapy that have definitely helped him. There are some of the processes of therapy in Montana that I just do not understand, that I do not think will help him in his life journey. In fact, I think are a danger to him. In the adult prison that he's in now, one of their processes is that the child, and this may not be something you want to put on the taping, but um, they're required to masturbate and report it. They're required to view pornography, and it must be documented. They require even the youth to record um, sexual thoughts and feelings and then report that. And then their therapist takes that journaling and gets to make the decision whether it's appropriate or deviant thoughts. So to me, that's simply setting our kids up for failure in that realm. So yes, there are some things that I think he's learning that are good, but they're, I mean, it's, not balanced out. I was a very, very naive parent in the beginning. I'd never been through this process. Um, my advice to other parents, if they're starting this process, is to absolutely make sure your child has counsel. Not just you in the room during an interrogation, not just you in the room in any process of police, of prosecuting attorney anywhere in the justice system. Make sure that that attorney is present. Make sure that you write everything down or record everything. So there's nothing missing when that time comes that you need to prove something.